Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Nick. And I'm Seema. And I'm Max. And with only a few days left before 7.0, we decided to team up again with another joint episode and talk about what we've been doing, what we are excited about coming in 7.0, and what we each expect to be doing first. That and more on this episode of the Escape Podcast for Star Wars The Old Republic, where our broadcast ashmuck today is EPC 414. <laughs> But that's not all. And we are Working Class Nerds. That's right. We are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, February 10th, 2022. And you can find this mashup podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far, far away. All right. Well, welcome, Nick. Welcome, Marcus. This is awesome. We did this once before about a year ago. I'm glad we got a chance to do it again. So what have you been up to, Marcus? Ooh, me first? This yes. is different. It's usually yeah. Nick's turn first. I'm we so nervous right now. It's up to you guys. Or, or the guests. Yeah. Oh, yes. Like, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like, I'm just yeah. nervous. Like I'm sweating my armpits. <laughs> I'm drinking a cold brew. I'm like shaking. Um, let's see. I took my kids out to dinner today to... Cracker Barrel because it has a store and it's the perfect ammunition to get them to behave in the restaurant and eat their supper. Cause if you threaten them that look at, you're not getting a toy, they will be there. They will be good. I mean, and it was perfect. And so coming home, running around, um, gaming wise, I've been playing a lot of destiny Two because with the expansion, so close for SWOTOR, like there's been, you know, I have not raided in months because I'm just waiting for the new R4 anomaly, I think. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, gaming, and then the last things I've been doing in Swotor is actually leveling uh, my first range tune through the entire story. I'm almost done with it um, because I've never played a non-force user in the game through the entire story. Interesting. So I've never, yeah, yeah so I've okay. never experienced cool. Valkorian giving me force powers as a non force user. So that's been really interesting. And actually, so many people like crap all over it, but I don't think they did a really bad job with it yet. You know what I mean? I think for the most part, they did pretty good. Um, oh, yeah. But, but the other thing I can say is I, you, I figured out why. I love a Marauder and because I cannot wait for a channeled ability to go off. I need to be smashing buttons at all times in order to keep my um, momentum in the game. I can't hit number two and wait for blazing bolts for four seconds. And then I can just, and then, you know what I mean? Or then wait for the next. Yes. It needs to be instant stuff. So whenever every, Yes. And whenever that anybody seconds, picks on Mark me, just gets so bored. <laughs> he like goes off and has to play another game while that channel's going off. It's just so boring. Yes. <laughs> well, it's it's the reason why usually when I play Marauder, I just put my nose on the keyboard and rub it back and forth, and I win. <laughs> you know, just, just um, do all the abilities. But I would say so. The other thing is, I made my character a cosplay character, and I've never done that before. My cosplay character is Kogus. <laughs> Your Wait, cosplay you're cosplaying as, as Kogus? Kogus? Yes. So, yep. Kogus flying around the galaxy, hitting on everybody that I have a flirt option for, and being that sassy thing. But then, you got the facial hair like going. Decision, you got the, you know, you, 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 you like uh, cosmetically ma match it to, to Kogus's goatee and stuff. No, he's a Sith. He's a. Uh, He's a, I think I did a body type one, um, Sith, pure blood Sith just for the comedy part of it. But it's really funny when we're playing it because when we get to like a light side, dark side choice, we say, what would Kogus do? And all of a sudden he'll pop up in chat and say the complete opposite thing that I said he would say. <laughs> and most of this time is the dark side choice, which is kill him. And it breaks my heart. Because I don't know. Pretty abstract. So it's not a cosplay of Kogas. Yeah. It's a cosplay of Kogas's character. Correct. Yes. Yeah. But it's been an adventure. And it's been a really long time coming for this expansion. So I'm 
I'm looking forward to all of the things. All right. How are you? <laughs> well, we'll get into we'll get into well, that because I heard there were things that you were not looking forward to, but we'll we'll talk just about just a that. wee. <laughs> a little bit. How about you, Nick? What have you been up to? Um, so recently I've been up to a whole lot of Halo Infinite. Um oh, historically I am not a Halo person. Um I've been playing the campaign on stream because I, I like to do some kind of RPG type story um content on stream. And that sort of checks those boxes, but Previously, I was playing for reference Horizon Zero Dawn, and I finished all of that and the DLC, and that was fantastic. Um, so I'm, I'm playing the Halo Infinite campaign on stream, which is mostly shooter still, um, especially as I'm finishing the game. I'm, I think my next stream, I'll, I'll finish the campaign story. But it's essentially a linear shooter with like open world exploration to get like the extra goodies to upgrade your armor and abilities. Like but Infinite your- is their RPG version of Halo, right? Both, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a it's, campaign it's, and the and the uh, and the multiplayer part, right? So it's it the campaign is um it's definitely much more RPG than past Halos for sure. There's upgradable gearing th- type things. It's pretty shallow, but it's way more than uh you know a standard issue Halo campaign. And I, it's definitely interesting. But fun fact, I didn't realize uh the big bad guy is a brute called Esheram, and. Hmm. I thought the voice is super deep and gravelly, and I was one. I thought it was in my oh, head. Oh, no, tell me, who is it's, it? It is. It's Darren DePaul. Oh, wow! Really? No. Yes. Oh my god! He voices Esheram. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> and it, it made me really. I was like, wait. I was picturing the voice actor that did Kratos. That's how deep the voice is. So mm-hmm. I was like, Kratos from God of War um, for PS4. Yeah. And I was like, and then I looked it up, and I was like, no way! It's Darren DePaul. That's my crazy. Gosh. That is crazy. He is. If you don't know, that's awesome. the the gentleman who's voice acted many, many, many characters, but including Valkorian on this, right? Yeah, including Valkorian. So it's really cool to realize that, and then also realize, oh my gosh, we met him at. Uh, well, speaking of that, the Cantina, right? When we yeah. were in New York and we met him, and I actually asked him, "Do you? How much do you love?" voice acting he said it's his dream come true he said he waited his whole life and it stinks that in the latter mm-hmm. part of his life that's when he really took off in voice acting and he said he doesn't say no to a job now because he loves it so much yeah, yeah. i can that's totally really cool. see that yeah yeah he's he's awesome i mean he does an amazing job with it <laughs> every every project that i I like i look through and it's like oh he voiced this character and this character and this character yeah so many but, in the industry now well i might have um, to check that out i I have a history with Halo. I worked for Microsoft when the Xbox was being invented. Um, wow. and I was actually a beta tester for the first time that Halo multiplayer um, was going to, uh, was getting un- unnetworked. And for early, Halo 2? Uh, yeah, for Halo 2. Um, oh, wow. But then I, I played Halo 1 even before that was released. Um, but I, I haven't played... Um, uh, Infinity War or whatever it is. <laughs> Infinite? Halo Infinite. Halo Infinity War. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't played that one yet, so maybe I will have to now, especially because Darren's in it. Sorry, you said you yeah. you 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 still have more stuff there. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, sure, so cool. Um, I just watched the uh, the cutscenes on on YouTube. Oh, sweet. Oh yeah, listen to that sweet sweet voice acting from uh, Mr. DePaul. But um, no, I'm enjoying that. So like, I was never a super duper Halo person. My like casual shooter was always Call of Duty. But with this one, I, I really gave it a chance during the beta and realized, oh, this is just, it's not trying to be Call of Duty like my, you know, 12 year old brain thought it was. Um, it's, this is a totally different play style. You know, it's a lot, not tactical per se, but it, each engagement with somebody is more of a dance instead of just like twitchy turn and shoot like in Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. So I'm enjoying that a lot more. Um, and I've been playing a lot of the multiplayer. I think I have like 65 hours in the game. Oh, and probably 10 or 12 of them are on stream so the rest of it's just multiplayer but um well yeah here's, it's awesome here's a here's a connection for you bungie mm-hmm. which was was well, is the big like the big microsoft release and was the big halo thing bungie is now owned by sony right. sony just bought bungie and call of duty call of duty is now owned by microsoft correct wow. so it's all yeah. gonna it's all twisting around everything's going well around. except that the 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 purchase is not nothing and it's being yeah. investigated oh, by the sec oh. yeah. but yeah, they're they gonna are. get it like yeah, they can't no. not let them sell the no, thing they can't say no yeah. probably not yeah. yeah 
Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but Bungie uh, was re- owned by Activision for a while too, right? Mm-hmm. It has and then they just that. recently... Did they? Yeah, they were just recently... I think they got purchased by Activision in... I looked it up. It was like 2015 or something. Oh, I did not and know th- that. And then they recently split with Activision like a year ago or maybe even less. And now then Activision just got bought by Microsoft, obviously. So, oh, so could it was I like buy. they just yeah. narrowly escaped that only to be then bought by Sony. Yeah. Interesting. Cool, cool. But anywho, uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Halo. And yeah, I'm looking forward to um, mostly the story content and the expansion. Sweet. That well, is my... Yeah. Well, oh, sorry. Did did you... Sorry. Did, we're, we're getting there later. Yes. We're but, jumping ahead. Sneak preview. It's very strict... Yes, listen. <laughs> my timer says my timer says we have 22 minutes and 52 oh seconds to finish the podcast. We're never we gonna need make to go. it. Seba, what have you been up to? <laughs> so, I I've been playing a lot of Sotor this week. So nothing mm. sexy like games that you know I don't normally play. But I I went down this rabbit hole. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm I'm not going to be successful at this, but I went down this rabbit hole of I'm going to log in every character and I'm going to finish all the weeklies they have that are in partial oh. completion. Oh my god! Oh I know. So if it's a if it's a weekly for Dantooine or the swoop races, I can just abandon it because those right. are not going to happen between now and Tuesday. But <laughs> I have so many characters that have like one of ten on uh. IOCAF. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a feeling I'm going to have to let go of some of those. But uh, I have been running around on Iocath and Andron and things that I te- tend to never finish. Um, but still, I've only logged into like a third of my characters and it's Thursday. So, hey, I don't know. I got to get, I got to get. But... Well, and, and I'm also when I'm, I'm logging in, I'm also noting which characters have crates. And I'm trying to open all my renown crates because right. they're going away. And um, this is in the news, but we're, you know, some tacticals too we got to think about. And yep. um, so so that has actually taken up oh, <laughs> quite a bit of time. Just not not only just logging in, but also looking at the, at the quest logs. And then I get distracted because I'm thinking, oh, you know, this one has Belsavis for, a f- oh, and on top of all that, then I think, oh, well, I should get this character to a, to a thousand, um, you know, 100k conquest right so then i think well they need two on belsavis and three on corellia and blah 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 blah. so why don't i just knock those out right now and then and then it's like nighttime by then right. i start in the morning That's not trivial. <laughs> right so we'll see how far i get but i actually have been having fun with it because i have as you know like several uh heroics that i do and I don't do any of the others, so I'm having to do some of the others. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, so and, that's different. And you will be incented to do to mix it up in 7.0 as well. Yes, I will be. Yes, which that's I'm be fun. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk about 7.0 we'll talk in a minute. About 7.0. But show. yes, that's what I've been doing. And I'm kind. Of, tonight is normally the night we would do our ops team. Um, so we're doing this instead, which is way Oops. more exciting, actually, fun, and fun, way fun. more, in my case. Alcohol laced. Uh-huh. Fun, fun, I've been fun waiting till Malgus. So takes Max, the... <laughs> what yes. have you been up to? Yeah, Max, what about you? <laughs> Seeing that, well, Marcus, it's, every, okay. it's totally fun of my me. life. I've been are waiting. Quite inconsequential. Listen, I've been waiting four hundred episodes to say that because it seems like every week Seema forgets to ask that question. And <laughs> Max, not. every episode is like, "So Seema, do you want to hear what I want? I've been doing." <laughs> I mean, it that's, could be worse. It could Seema could forget a whole chunk of the intro. That's like, because I'm that. not. That's because I'm not done yet. But oh, everyone else is ready oh. for me to be done. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> I'm jumping ahead as per as per usual. Chomping at no. the bit. <laughs> so Max, what's up with you this week? Oh. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Uh, I, <laughs> I I have been slip, slipping in some extra game time for non Star Wars games in this brief brief moment before we get to Seven Although still, Mandatory Fun Night was awesome on Tuesday. We ran around and did a bunch of that. I have been prepping, prepping my characters, but I've been doing that for weeks. I'm not doing crazy things like trying to get renowned nine 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 or or what you're doing complete every weekly. What do you have like nine nightmare pilgrim kills that you need to, to do this weekend too, probably? <laughs> right. Right. I'm not I'm not gonna accomplish that for sure. Right. 
Uh, I did sneak in, though. Uh, there were two games that have launched recently. So last week, a game called Zenith The Last City uh, launched, and that's a 100% VR uh, MMORPG. Um, it's from an indie startup. It's it's sort of um, just a just a just scratching the surface. It's an early release. It's not even a, a fully complete game. Um, I may even do a video review of it uh, because it is kind of cool and it gives you a glimpse of putting the headset on and that kind of like metaverse and what gaming could be in the future in full MMO in VR. Um, so that mm. was cool. And then what two days ago, Lost Ark launched and the last arc's not not totally my cup of tea but i i you know any new cool r you know mmorpg which lost arc kind of is pretty much is um although it's action um an action action rpg um it's still cool uh lost arc is very much like playing diablo if diablo is an mmo you know so it, if there was if you'd wrapped all the mmo things around diablo but the gameplay the action rpg the isometric view very Diablo-ish. Um, in fact, mm. I was I was playing some things in in a couple of the early chapters, and I was getting deja vu. I felt like I had done this before, and I was re- remembering things I had done in Diablo, and it just felt so similar. But I mean, there's a whole bunch more that they do. I'm sure they're differentiated. I don't mean to to say that they're not, but uh, but yeah. So AIE is doing a bunch of stuff there. Check in our Discord if you want to jump in with the Lost Ark uh, crew. Uh, we've got a, We actually had to do a few different. Uh, sub guilds because they when you start the guild you only get 30 slots for characters so we filled up Whoa. you know we already filled up like one and three quarters um just for ai for launch so you can you can build up the, the cap of characters up to 100 over time but i don't know why they do that that, that didn't seem too great an idea to me um but yeah star wars i do have a little bit of continued prep that I want to do, but I'm only really focusing on sort of like the three, three of my main characters. I will want to get, finish up conquest one, uh, to, to 100, um, 100 K because remember if you're trying to make sure you get your guild reward, when you log in on Tuesday, you have to be up to hundred K, even though you got your personal target at 50 K this week. Um, so if you want that guild reward on Tuesday, it is just to be at hundred K and then as Seema said, there's still some cleanup that everybody's going to either have to do or just ignore, and then you'll get 100 credits per renowned crate or whatever things that you don't clean up that are going away. And we'll talk a little bit about what exactly is going away because we did get an update on that in the news. Now an Imperial News Network report. So yeah, first up in the news. What is getting removed on Tuesday? The post that went up was a li- little bit of a surprise. Most of it was what we knew and had expected and had seen and, and were prepared for. This sort of all of the, the second Ooh. half, they, they had us in the, in the second half. Renowned caches, renowned trophies, anything to do with renown, that's all going away. Right. So everybody's been prepared for that. We know the renown system is going away. Uh, a bunch of boosts, especially any boosts that have to do with re- renown, are going away. Away, but a couple of the social boosts are going away as well. If you leave I any of this, the social boosts. What's that? I hadn't really suspect. I mean, I hadn't really expected the social boosts. Yeah, I, I didn't know if I had missed something, or uh, I didn't know why the social boosts were going away. But they're going away. Uh, and then the the bigger thing that caused a little bit of consternation although even when we did our interview with chris schmidt we asked him about this and he said yes there will be some tuning and some of the Mm -hmm. tacticals may go away it's a little late for them to get the final list out to us so this caused a little consternation in the community as you might expect but there is a list here of about a dozen tacticals that will be disappearing as of tuesday and a couple of them are popular ones that are like best in slots that people use the Thank reason God for them. the reason for this is some of those abilities are becoming part of the style the combat style right. so you, right. they kind of don't make sense anymore and that's the main reason these these are going away is they're not going to like double it up and if it's already there as part of the combat style now then it shouldn't be a tactical my favorite one on the list is go to sleep go to sleep for shadows yeah. and assassins yeah that's sad well because everybody's gonna roll a <laughs> But what I've been saying all along is that 
for sure. I mean, that some are going away, but probably not the ones that you get from events and stuff that are usable at level 10 or level 1. Right, 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 right. Um, so take a look at that list. If there's anything in there that you want to do something with, you'll need to do it this week. Otherwise, they'll just be turning into a pittance, uh, a small number of, of credits. You So like a tactical, you could sell for about 6,000 credits. The Pro move is to uh, disassemble them this week because then you have a chance of getting a legendary umber and tech right. brags if you and still some... want to cap out tech brags. Right. Can we just have a moment of silence for massacre when Fang God form leaves? Well, unless it it could show up again. They're they're creating new tacticals and they're bringing in new abilities. It could come back in something else. So mm -hmm. it may be back. Marcus, I just want to point out how nice the um, actual website looks compared to when it gets copy and pasted into the show notes. <laughs> See, that's how it's supposed ah. to look like, by the way. <laughs> look at my, he's staring at you through the camera. He's he's glaring. You have to. Make, if make looks sure could kill, my my uh, walls in my bedroom here would not be red with light. It'd be blood. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. It's a running listen, joke between okay. him and I. Marcus I, I'm the worst copy and, and paste ever. Leaves. All the formatting, so it'll be like black and gold, but it'll be all screwed up to oh, the yeah, website. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it'll be like three letters per line, and it'll be our our documents now 150 pages long. Yes, gotta, <laughs> gotta copy. Gotta you, just, you can hit right I click and click paste without I formatting. Don't copy and paste, <laughs> or paste it into Notepad first, and then copy right. it out of Notepad and paste it into where you need to put it. Put it there you go. That's that an extra works. step. Right. Nick spicy <laughs> like, like a Vegeta. So what else is in the news, Zima? <laughs> so there is also a a problem with if you happen to have Alder Lake CPU, which is like uber super hyper recent Intel CPU chipset. Mm -hmm. And some people are also saying in the comments if you have the most recent um, AMD Ryzen chipset, also there's a problem with the launcher. I think it is so. There's some. Uh, steps for you to follow that are in the SOTOR dev tracker. Um, if you, yeah, so follow those steps. But basically, if you, which me, I'm like five generations behind on the Intel CPU. So this is making me feel like, ah, I need a new <laughs> computer. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you have, the, if you're on the bleeding edge, you might have an issue with the launcher. Check out this forum post on SOTOR dev tracker to find the steps to make it work. Cool. Um, do you guys actually, do you guys still use the launcher or do you use steam? I use steam. I use the Me launcher, too. but steam uses the launcher. Yeah. But Ste it's steam different. behind the scenes does use still use the launcher too. Yeah. I have them both installed and I still use the, the old launcher. I mean, I feeling if you, I have a feeling that if you had Alder like a CPU and you were using steam, you would still have this problem, but I, I could mm. be wrong. So yeah, that's good to hear that that is fixed. Hey, Gildan Community News. Marcus, why don't you take this one? So uh, the first Friday of every month is Master Mode Flashpoint Night where Mal or Mei Lung um, will help you earn some mounts that you can only get through Master Mode Flashpoints. What are Master Mode Flashpoints? It's four player instance content that is the hardest difficulty in the game for the flashpoints and yes. they do get some tough they it, it is tough and you have mm -hmm. to do certain ones to be able to earn mounts in the game that you can only get through these flashpoints so that's the first friday of every month and then every single tuesday is, what is mandatory that? every single tuesday okay yep is mandatory fun night where the fun is mandatory but attendance but, is not. Yeah, BC is the greatest leader to lead us through mandatory fun nights since Apolis. And let me tell you, he does a great job. We do all different types of fun stuff. So it's always a great time. That happens 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is the central time zone for the entire world. That's 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> it's and, the best time um, zone. And it's so much fun. So please join us. And then 
the fourth Saturday of every oh, month. Nick. The fourth Saturday of every one month is my favorite event. Now, before I talk about it, that's kind of <laughs> a lot of Saturdays. It's How a, many is uh, that? A, it's a little tricky to schedule. So it's four Saturdays. Do you guys know what that sounds like? Oh, tell, tell us, us Nick. So that's Saturday, 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 and it's Mega, the monthly epic guild activity, where we'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Mega. Sweet. And, and, this, and this month's Mega um, will is unknown. So what's the date of the Mega, Nick? It's the What's the fourth Saturday this month? Oh, uh, the fourth Saturday is Saturday February 26th. So Saturday, February 26th, mm -hmm. I'm going to probably, well, I'm going to say it right now. It's going to be whatever benefits everybody the most in 7.0. Yeah. So we right now, we don't actually know what's going to help everybody, whether it's acquire gear or materials, whatever we're going to need the most of in 7.0. That's what we'll be doing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure what that'll be yet because guess what? 7.0 isn't here yet. So if all this sounds fun to you, go to AI. Go to. Oh, go ahead. Oh, am I doing it or are you doing it? <laughs> Nick. I was waiting for the you, throw. Me? All you, right. Me go, you, you go. If all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE-guild.org. Jump in the Discord, the link for which you can find in the top right-hand corner of the website, and ask for a guild invite. Whether or not you play Star Wars Old Republic or any of the other games that we play, we would love to have you. Hey, Nick, do you got to go to the bathroom? <laughs> We're not stopping. I no. always do, but I'm not going to pull this car over. Today. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use yeah. the Gatorade bottle, okay? We only have six minutes till the podcast is over. We better hurry up. Just, just everybody roll down the windows. We, have, and we haven't even smell. gotten we'll to the to the to the main segment yet. Um, <laughs> Seema, we do have uh, one other thing though for the guild that we did want to have a, a shout out to though, didn't we? Yes, yeah, so our uh, Wednesday Night Ops team, which is Sith with Unlimited Power, or SUP, is looking for a full-time DPS character. So if you are looking for an Ops team, they meet on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. Contact Mei Lung or Albus, or just put, a tell, you know, just put something in our main Discord saying, hey, I want to raid on Tuesday nights, and they'll pick you up. Um. Just no so everybody, necessary. yes, and I just want to say that that was my first raid team. Sup is the reason why I am in, in AIE. I heard it on the podcast back when we were on Jedi Covenant, and I was doing garage door trim all those years ago. And Max and Zima were like, "We're on Jedi Covenant, and if you want to try raid, no experience necessary." And I joined the guild that night, and I joined that raid team. And let me tell you, when there, if you have no experience, they're going to take you to Eternity Fall. And after that moment, you are going to fall in love. You'll be hooked. And you're going to fall off the cliff. But yeah, that's, that that's, <laughs> that's between you and Soa. But if you don't right. know, you'll find out. <clears throat> Join that team. Elvis and Mal are awesome. Sweet. I think I, I think I was with you when you were doing that garage door trim. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. That was way, 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 way back when I used to work for the same company that Marcus did. Wait, nice. that is my company. Was that oh, is that Bouchard or was that pre Bouchard? No, that was me. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, never mind that. Hey, shout Meanwhile, out to the chat room. The ranch. Well, we've had a bunch of people in there. We we rest we restarted the podcast about three times to to get all of our multi person intros all coordinated. And if you yes. want to hear that kind of fun, you need to join those usual suspects in the chat room. We really appreciate everybody who's in there helping us level our levels and listening to our shenanigans both before and after the show. So thank you all. And with that, let's get into legacy of the Sith. Da -da -da. Power will be yours. If you are willing to burn. If you are willing to burn. Uh, reminds me of Darren DePaul. That's not Darren DePaul's voice, but that was like no. the Valkorian. Um, you know, you can achieve anything if you are willing to sacrifice. Um, so this is this is this expansion's key phrase, and it is a good one. Uh, but we did have to clarify. We've been clarifying for a couple weeks now. It's if you are willing to burn things, like burn the world, burn things down, not set yourself on fire. 
um, just to be clear. So don't, don't, don't think you need to, to, to do that. I mean, I have a feeling that power <laughs> would be mine, even though I'm not willing to burn. Uh, well, Seema, uh, you're, you're just like made of power. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't think we could, uh, we could get away you are that. power, but yeah, so here we are on the eve of, I, I've just been calling it 7.0, but I, I see like everybody on, on Twitter's leg, legacy of the Sith. I guess that's its name, but I just call it 7.0. Uh, Legacy of the Sith is coming on Tuesday. So just in a few days, or maybe by the time you download this podcast and, and listen to it, it, it may be about to be here. And we've been waiting for quite a while, haven't we? Uh, a lot of It's Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> a lot of lead up, a lot of work that they put into it. They've been working on it for over a year, probably about a year and a half now when they first started talking about it. In fact, but way back... Um, well, I'm sure they've been thinking about it for forever, but yeah, I, 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 this Chicago celebration when we were out there, no, New York, the New York Cantina, New York one, when we were out there with, uh, with the devs, um, they were, they were dropping hints even way back then. Yeah. So glad to see it's finally here. Not everything is coming in the, in the very first day. In fact, this is going to be a, a long rolling expansion with more stuff that's coming. The operation is not going to come the first day. So that's not coming on Tuesday. That's going to come in 7.1. So it's coming pretty soon, but that's not not coming the first day. We will get a flashpoint. We're going to get the story. We're going to get combat styles and loadouts. We're mm -hmm. going to get the new gearing system and gear progression. We're going to get eight new levels. So what we wanted to do here, just on the eve of that expansion, is go around and talk about for each of us what you're most excited for, and then we'll get to we'll get to we we talked about prep last week, but we'll get to what we each have decided to focus on like in the next week or week or two, you know, what, what are you going to do first? Um, so let's start with what, what you're most excited about, or I guess in Marcus's case, uh, if you have anything that, uh, that you're, uh, angry about that you wanted to get off your chest. <laughs> well, I think <clears throat> so for me, so I, I'm going to say, I think the hardest part for me is I was so excited for the December release. And when it got delayed the nine weeks, it almost was like that balloon that like, yeah. like, and wah, wah. So, exactly. Cause you know, even like our, our nightmare raid team that we were doing, we just killed Kefis and like the team was on a high and then we were deflated because we were like, okay, the raids coming a month after. So we're going to get the raid in December. I mean, in January, cause it's coming in December. Let's. Let's just take a little siesta and everybody just relax and enjoy it. And then when the new operation comes, we'll go full tilt boogie and we'll start doing all the rating for um, story mode stuff for, you know, for gear. And but first and foremost, like I think SWOTOR still holds the Guinness Book of World Record uh, for the most voice acted game ever made. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to the story because I think Malgus got the short end of the stick in the original story because yeah. he was such a dominant character in the actual trailers. And you always wanted more of his story. And he was always just the guy that was talking to you. If you were on the imp side, um, yeah, through like flashpoints, like that's the only way you actually saw him. So if you never did a flashpoint, through the game you wouldn't even know who malgus was right right yeah. and the um huh, the timer's going off podcast is over um <laughs> so but i'm looking forward to seeing what malgus is up to like the last we saw him he was on um one, what was the O planet awesome was it no no on to run on to run was that the last one no no no, he he went to Dan. He went back to Dan Tuin. That's what the, it was. For the, the Enclave. Jedi Enclave, right? Yep. <clears throat> and then you had that that crazy Jedi and he screaming at you. Bet you didn't see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's her. <laughs> exactly. So um, that was cool. You know, so I'm dying to know, like, what was he after? What is he doing? Because mm -hmm. believe it or not, in the original story, his idea of like an inclusive empire i was kind of down with it i wasn't actually against yep. them you know and so i'm really eager to see what he's up to 
But the thing I'm not looking forward to is I'm kind of nervous on the gearing because now if I'm not reading it right, you guys correct me, but the only way I can get operations gear is by doing operations. So does it, so that basically means every day I'm going to have to do as much story mode rating as possible to get that gear rating. And then we're going to have to start working through every hard mode every week over and over and over again to acquire more gear, to be able to get to that gear rating, which will then allow us to get into the harder, harder content. Kind of because kind of, well, cause if we do a flashpoint, the flashpoint gear doesn't work with the operations gear, even though your gear rating is up, but it's still not the same. So I, you can mix and match. So you're, 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 you're kind of right, but you okay. can mix and match. And because the gear ratings are about the same, especially up to the story, story mode operations gear, why not get, you know, half fill half your gear slots with flashpoint gear, fill half your gear points with operations gear, and maybe even a couple couple pvp pieces in there the only the only downside is if you're gonna mostly just be doing operations week to week you can't upgrade the flashpoint pieces with the currency that comes out of the operations so you may want to like switch those out over time but you're gonna get a bunch of side grades dropping off and off of bosses that you can put in there and so i don't i don't think i mean we're you're right we're gonna have to see i don't think it's gonna be as awkward as it sounds and as limiting as as you're thinking it is. I think you're going to be able to just go wherever you want. Because, yeah, Sorry Saber also in the chat room reminds us, there's no set bonuses on the gear. Again, so if you got two PvP pieces and two Flashpoint pieces and a Conquest piece and Operations pieces, and they're all three, you know, 326, well, then they're all 326 gear. And it, there's, not, there's no sets. There's no set bonuses. You don't have to worry about any of that. So it's cool. Hmm. <clears throat> sounds nice and simplified well we'll see yeah I, we i'm see. really nervous yeah, right. about it because uh, like i said oh i think i said it in the pre-show i've been so i'm doing something that i've never really done it's take a sideline to following the dev tracker for this because i want to experience I, as we all know i'm always excited for everything right and when we got delayed, I said, you know what, from this point forward, I'm not going on the PTS. I'm not doing anything because I don't want to get a upset and deflate me even more. I'm going to wait. And I'm just going to, when I log in that first time into the game, whether it's Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to experience it the way it is and be blown away by the experience because I don't want to, you know, the hardest thing that I'm pill I'm trying to swallow right now is when I log in and all of those abilities are gone and the bars are empty. Like I I'm thinking about like, I'm going to be going to hit a defensive cooldown because it's been key bound for me for five years and it's not going to be there. So it's going to be a learning experience yeah. as, yeah. and I think you're right though, as so just just I, th I think if everybody just takes that view of I'm going to roll with it and this is this is like, a you know, it's a slightly different it's a different interpretation. It's an adaptation and we're just going to we're going to roll with it you know we're going to we're going to take it where it's going to take us. I think it has the opportunity to take us to interesting places. Uh, and once we live it, then I think we'll we'll get a little bit more of a, of a sense of the, the things that are coming together, because I have I have a lot of faith and trust in. Chris Schmidt and Matt, Matt Pusevich and, and David Satz and, and the entire team to, to, to put the, the pieces together that makes sense. And also when you log in and you see those empty keybinds, it's only going to be for a week. Right. You're going you're gonna to fill them in once you get to 80 and there will be a cup, maybe a, a, an ability missing or two, but True. in theory, those abilities should be missing because you really don't need them and just just play just play in that new world and you might never miss them Maybe. and i mean some of them you do have to make a choice but you can do loadouts so you can choices matter no <laughs> well i'm just okay so just saying that like i think if you're doing story content i think it doesn't matter and you don't need it 
Right. But where I'm concerned is if you're getting into the hard mode or the nightmare operations, have they been able to scale those fights in this time to not have, so if I don't, I'll use nightmare Kephas. There is a specific path you have to use every single time he drops to the ground as a tank to be able to survive his hits. Sure. And if you don't hit those buttons, it's a wipe. So my concern is, is have they scaled those in a way where either SEMA is doing mega healing and in, in overcompensating for the tanks not having cooldowns or have they just tuned it down so much to where the hits don't hit as hard? I don't know. I think that all remains to be seen. And mm -hmm. the, just in, in these kind of situations for, for people that haven't played a lot of different MMOs, it's you, you can get into a situation where things are much harder than, than they used to be, or things are kind of broken and maybe they need to fix and, and tune things as they go along. But the met, the meta, the meta changing of what abilities you hit when and what 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 loadout and what build you have to have and what your stat mix needs to be. The meta changing in an MMO can be a really fun and exciting time. So if if you look at even like RTS games, the meta changes over time. They they tweak, you know, even like you might think like Star StarCraft uh is perfectly perfectly balanced. They never have to change it again. They do. But part of the reason that they do is because that brings some interest back to the game and you need to learn or tweak and or invent some new strategies. And you know, the Nightmare Raiders are going to invent the new strategies. Of course. The other thing that we're going to get is the gear is not going to stop at 336 or three. I mean, it's, it's not even going to be to 336 until 7.1 and it's not going to stop there. So if things are really hard for a month. And then you get through the 336 gear and then starts, you know, then it starts to loosen up a little bit and then you're starting to down more bosses and then you get 340 gear and a couple new, you know, tweaks to the mechanics. There's going to be like new, a new progression track that's going on too. That might be fun and exciting and different. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Nick, what about you? What are you excited about? What are you chomping at the bit for? Uh, Marcus touched on it a little bit already, but I'm a big story guy. So in my streams, that's what I focus on. I'm a, my favorite, favorite, favorite style of game is a single player action RPG exhibit like, uh, fallout or Skyrim, or, um, I'd say mass effects kind of like that too, or horizon zero dawn, which I just played or like God of war is kind of like that too. Those, those genres are my jam. Um, and for me, the piece of Star Wars Old Republic that fits that is the story content, of course. So I'm not, you know, super into the group content per se, but I'm really looking forward to seeing particularly where Malchus is going and what's happening with that. You know, what are you laughing at? I just remember one time Nick tried end game content with us on a mandatory fun night and we were oh doing gosh. terror from beyond and Max said, Nick, we're going to go into this room and there's going to be these cubes and they shoot lightning. Don't stand in the lightning. Nick stood in the lightning. Yeah, that was very funny. <sighs> it was insta death. But um, but no, I, I think, I mean, my favorite character in all of Star Wars, at least my answer that I go to every time uh, we make a guest answer that question at the end of Working Class Nerds is Darth Bane. So I think a similar character in Star Wars Old Republic is, is Malgus um, in that they're both like innovative Siths and trying to change the way that the whole Sith culture is and operates or in the empire in case of, uh, um, Malchus, obviously, but, um, it's, so it's, I'm, I'm just interested in the story mainly is the sort of the short answer, but also, I mean, for me, I'm not super, I was never like super into the meta of the abilities and things like that to work. Cause I never needed to be, if I'm just focusing on story content. So it's going to be interesting for me to figure out what I have to do once like what I had key bound before is now gone. <laughs> as well but um yeah that'll be a little bit of a quick learning curve but i'm not super duper concerned about it because i'm you know i'm not doing end game content like you guys might be you know where that becomes super relevant all i need to know is can i beat the, the story boss fight you know what i'm what i'm really excited for nick is to watch you on your stream do the new story because i think it's going to be really fun to see because yeah. you're coming in as a 
uber casual player like when you get new story you play it and then right you know you take a hiatus because you're a story guy that's the game there's a reason why right. you have 500 hours in skyrim right that's right it's an endless <sighs> story exactly <laughs> right but so um, what about you fine. sima what about me what are you excited for <laughs> what about honestly me? <laughs> Seema's going Honestly. dark side. I think you can hear oh. it in her voice. That's what she's uh -oh. excited for. <laughs> oh, yes. I am most excited about switching from looking forward to it to actually doing it. And I know yeah. that seems like kind of a non-answer. But we've sort of been on this edge thinking about, oh, how is this going to work? And how am I going to have to do that? And what about gearing? What about this? And what are they getting rid of? And how blah, 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 blah. I'm just looking for the relief of logging in on Tuesday, hopefully Tuesday, and it's already there, and I can just like play. Yeah. And yeah, discover. Finally. Yeah. Finally, finally, getting it. Yes, here. I'm. I'm. I'm right. excited about the story. Um, I'm curious about how the ops will be tuned now. Yeah. Um, I don't really care about gearing because for weeks we're just going to be doing world stuff out in the world and story mode so mm -hmm. we'll see how we'll see how the gearing works out but i'm more i'm more i'm i'm really super excited about the transition from looking forward to it to it actually being here that's such a great answer it really is because we've been talking about it for three years yeah because it was three years ago we were in new york and i remember keith saying to myself max zen nick everybody that was there kogus doc everybody into star and he was like look it we're excited for onslaught but we're really excited for yeah. the 10 year anniversary and he was so jazzed for at that time that was that was crazy mm -hmm. yeah that was a while ago yeah, and he, yeah i remember he him being super super pumped up about it where do you stand on um the story seema are, are you i mean are, are you I'm, I'm sure you're so interested to see everything but is how high is that on your list of of so something you've been waiting for. I'm not the same fan of Malgus that you are. Mm -hmm. um, I am kind of interested to see what goes on between maybe Satil and um, Lanier. Oh, Aaron. Aaron Lanier. Aaron Lanier. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. So I'm uh, and I'm in, I'm I'm interested in what Malgus is after. Right, but I wouldn't right. mind the, the puzzle. Defeat. You know, I wouldn't mind the mystery defeating slash killing Malgus. Like I don't well, love him yeah. so much that I don't want to do that. And and Zen reminds us every week in the chat room that he is a bad guy, <laughs> and he is kind of <laughs> right. bad. You know, right. he like enslaved some people and murdered people, and you know, he's 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 not a nice guy. But you know, he, he's you know. Whatever he's got some good ideas too, so maybe maybe we need to like take his good ideas and uh, and 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 run with them. Um, but he may still need to pay for his crimes. Yeah, all right. Seema, did you heal in the PTS at all? No, not really. We just ran okay. around on this fleet and looked at things. We ran Elam. Yeah, that's true. Elam, and we smelled the, the musk. <laughs> <laughs> we smelled the musk, the Elam musk. Um, oh my god! I make that joke about uh, once every eighteen hours, and Seema's. You probably heard her eyes roll just then, so that's why I started <laughs> laughing before I finished saying. It, yeah, it's funny. He said it in Emma fan on this week, and somebody, not me, yeah, it was Elliot else. actually said that that is never gets old. Yeah. <laughs> In, in the most ironic tone of voice <laughs> ever. Right. Zen, there's like, Zen in the chat room. Please stop please saying stop that, saying Max. that. <laughs> Get a good whiff of that Elon Musk, guys. Um, oh, oh, my God. God. Yeah. So. That's such a gross word. Attention, everybody. Dad joke in stream. Dad joke in stream. Uh, Beware. But, yeah, so yeah. we did a, a little bit of stuff. So a little bit of healing, a little bit of uh, DPS, a little bit of tanking. And... Um, it was still, all, I mean, we got through Elam. It was still pretty reasonable. Nothing, but it was still just story mode Elam. Or was it story or vet? It might have been vet mode. We didn't have the droids or. I think we did vet mode because we had Corley yeah. and Luffy mm -hmm. with us. Right. So it was, you know, it was regular. And I 
I I don't I seem to kept me alive. Maybe I was healing I did, myself. I didn't, kept Corey alive. Corley did. alive. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but we didn't try any ops, if that's what you're asking me, right, Marcus? Right. Oh, I just meant, did you heal at all in it, just to get a feeling for it, what it was like? Like felt like it was broken? very it was very challenging, and that's I think right. about halfway through we figured out that somebody maybe didn't have armor on or something, but um. Yeah, I did feel like my heels were doing almost nothing. Wait, are you sure Zen wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> no, there was I, a, I there was also the invisible legs issue. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> that was that was yes, that was the best part. Yeah. Those were those new special camo pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See through. The Harry Potter cloak of invisibility pants. Um did, so me, well, my, thanks for asking. Go ahead. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> got us well, at least at least we're consistent uh i'm gonna go the other direction and while i i am excited for everything and if we're to finally get here and, and story is is pretty high on my list <clears throat> i actually am excited for the gear and the gear progression and having something to go after and work for uh Whoa. and and discovering as we go along like what it, you know, what, what kind of path you sort of want to take. And if we want to do things like run a couple flashpoints and upgrade a couple pieces of gear that way, and then run an, maybe like run an operation sooner, try to go kill Nefra on master mode. If see if we can get her down just to get a side grade drop off of Nefra, that kind of thing that, that, and then like the conquest parts that are part of it as well. What's the best way to get to 100k conquest? Because you need that conquest currency for some of the upgrade paths as well. Managing sort of the new optimal, personal personal optimal. And I'm not going to be like min maxing on on day one uh, myself even. Um, but that personal optimal path for what I want to do with a couple of my main characters, it's a progression thing that really haven't had in Swotor in a long time. You know, most of us have all been at 306 gear for, you know, a long, long time now. Having five new levels to go after and then a gear progression path that's going to even extend beyond 7.0 and 7.1 and there's going to be more gear progression. All right, that's sort of interesting. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Uh, max, not min-maxing, max-maxing. My gear is always <laughs> max gear. Um, uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's where I'm at. Uh, I I like I like the progression. I like uh, while well, I'm playing, as I said, I'm playing a little lo uh, Lost Ark, and the part that I like, um, that I said that I said I'm I'm not a, that big a fan of action, you know, the action combat, but the RPG part where there's progression and you're getting the levels and you're leveling up and you're getting new gear and just gear dropping, that's a really fun part of of MMOs for me. And I will play any MMO, level it to cap. And I've said this before, even with, with other MMOs that have launched, you know what I'm going to do? And I predict it ahead of time. I, I, I Like WoW Classic. <laughs> WoW Classic comes out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level to max level. And the day after, I'm going to quit playing. I know it. That's just how it's going to go. And, but, and that's but, the, that, but that makes no sense because that's when you start the gear that you just said you're most interested well, that, in. The gear. They, they're, but yeah, the... It it depends on on what which kind of of gear progression and not just the gear progression, just the progression in general. The progression get got like an order of magnitude harder once you hit sixty um, in like WoW Classic. And if it, I won't be going after master mode operations gear coming out of the gate, and probably not before seven dot one or seven dot two. Not not before it comes back down. I won't go after three uh, two. 236 gear or 336 gear or whatever because i'm not that player so that's that's so, why i will stop when, when i mean you need to be like a hard you need to get into the hardcore mode that's when i'll stop so that's in the in a game like wow that's when i find the gear grind a little more entertaining because it affects how you play out in the world right in swotor well, it yeah. doesn't so I like 
getting a little bit better gear and then things I do on a daily basis get easier and easier as you get better gear. And SOTOR, that doesn't happen. I well, it happens. Yeah, it happens I think it's gonna. You... Uh, like, well, like heroics and flashpoints and our, our Thursday night group, it will, it'll matter. It will. That's right. It, but it won't matter for anything out in the world. I, I think. And it, what about for like weeklies, like a heroic weeklies on the planets? I think it well, will. I'm call, that that is now. out in the world. Yeah. So That's you think what I mean it, by out in the world. Yeah, you don't think it's going to matter at all to 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 go from. It doesn't now. From three twenty to three thirty six. It doesn't know. now because because you go to that planet and your stats are all capped. Scaling. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Um, the the only difference is we get with the three hundred six gear, we get the thirty stacks of whatever that thing is. Veteran's Edge. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, I mean things did get easier going from yeah going from two seventy to three three hundred six. Did they? Because of the Veteran's Edge, as you said. Yeah, Veteran Veteran's Edge was still a multiplier. That for even stuff out in the world. So I don't know, and and okay. maybe it won't. Like and but I'm you're right. My I'm looking at my character right now, and she doesn't have veteran ed veterans edge running around on the guild ship. Uh, yeah. And but but you are right. It it matters much less for anything except vet you know vet and master mode group content. You're right. I mean, and that that is a design goal of bioware they did that mindfully and maybe it is a little bit of a flaw maybe you're right maybe it needs to no needs i'm not really saying it i'm not saying it's a flaw i'm just saying that i care more about the gear grind in games where it matters for the activities i do than i do and they don't matter for the activities that i do day to day in this game it only matters for ops which i do once a week yeah but maybe if if there was a uh, you know at least a little bit of an effect um it might feel good and it might, it might, yeah, it might be a little more sure. incentive and might make people go after that gear and tweak their builds and, and things like that, even just a little bit. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see what that feels like. I would want, you know, Elam story mode was a little bit harder than I would want coming out of the gate and being able to do a little bit of gear progression and make it easier over time. That sounds like a fun process. I mean, if it does make it easier, yeah. Right. If it does. All right. What about, and we'll let this go back around on this. So Tuesday comes. Uh, everybody's going to like take the week off of work because that's what we do. Um, expect that the <laughs> server is going to come up instantly and the patch is going to be available and there's not going to be any glitches and they're not going to have to take it down. There's not going to be any bugs. And that then, never happens in gaming. I don't know what you're referring to. <laughs> and then what you gonna do? What are you gonna do first? What are you gonna do the first week or the first two weeks? What are you gonna do first? Marcus, what are you gonna do first? That's such an do? it's such a loaded question because what I wanna do first and what I can do first are kind of different, right? Because what I would like to do first is um, just get right into raiding, but we have five levels to get through and do the story. So the first thing we're going to do, I'll do is the story, but I'll really take my time because I feel like the first time you get to see this story is when you can be the most engaged in it. Cause once you know it, you half listen in my opinion. Yeah. And then the other thing is, I don't know if how, okay. So when we load in, is it going to be like, boom, you're to a screen that says, pick your second combat style, or is it going to be you load in as normal, but then there's going to be a little ticker at the top that says, click here to create your other combat style. I'm not really sure. So I would say, just the excitement of loading it up for the first time and see what's different because I have seen the pictures from the PTS. It doesn't even look like the same game when you load in. Hmm. Right. Well, like the character create screen is all right. Yeah. New. They're, they're, all that. Yeah. There are big changes to the UI. Right. Um, but 
I would say the story for me and just in, in really thinking about what my second combat style will be like, cause obviously I'm going to main a juggernaut tank and hopefully it's playable. But then the other side of that is if I can make my Marauder, the juggernaut tank, I'm going to love life. If I can make uh, both of those work yeah. and those can be, Oh, you can't. Yeah. No, no, you can't. I, no, I, I was agreeing. Oh, so no, you can that, that is going to be, that will be really exciting for me because running as a tank through flashpoints, like when you're just trying to like mow through something stinks, but if I can have two lightsabers, right. Oh my God, that's going to, and then I'm actually gearing my tank. Um, that's going to be great. Cause it, correct me if I'm wrong. All the gear is the same. No tank gear is still tank gear. It's got defense and shield and absorb on it. So that will be a little bit of a flaw if you aren't able to set your loot type to tank, then if you switch over to your Marauder style, you might, uh, you might be getting DPS gear drops. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to keep an eye on that. The currency in completing the weeklies and doing it for like doing it for the, the, like the currencies and the, the, like, you know, like the, the, the weekly reward you could do as a, and, and spend that to upgrade your tank gear. But the drops will, unless do we, we don't have that anywhere now where we can say, Hey, I'm, I'm running flashpoints and I want tank gear to be dropping for me right now. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. But so in, in, yeah, in flashpoints and operations, we have that, but we don't have that in, Oh, do we have that in open world anywhere? Like doing heroics? Uh, Loot discipline. I have the choices of um, all three of possible specs. Oh, so and I'm out in the world? Yeah. Where where do you even see that? Why do I not? Why do I? Right do I... click on the port character portrait and then loot discipline. Right click on character portrait, loot discipline. Oh yeah. So maybe, yeah. So there you go. Well, there you go. So that's what you got to do. Yeah. You got to, oh uh, no, it's still going to be a problem for you. Um, it's going to be a problem for you because Marauder doesn't have a tank, um, uh, a tank advanced class. Hmm. Oh, so I won't be able to be a Marauder tank unless they put like all your all your loot disciplines for both of your combat styles on there. Because hmm. because the 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 combat the second combat style is is like is like a second class, right? And when you switch right. to it, you switch to that second class, and then you get the three the three builds. You still have the three mm -hmm. tree choices, uh, you know. Like so, for Marauder, you got your your dot spec, your burst spec, and your yeah, um, Carnage Fury and Annihilation. Yeah. So you still have cho your choice between Carnage Fury and Annihilation, and then if you switch to the the Guardian combat style, then you've got the the DPS and the tank, um, uh, ad advanced builds specs. If on your Marauder combat style, they don't give you the choice to switch to your loot discipline to be one of your other combat styles disciplines. That's a, that will be a, a problem for you there. Right. You can still build, you can still build it that way. You just have to play with the gear a little bit. Um, and like maybe when you kill the boss, you're going to have to switch back to tank spec just to make sure you get the, the drop, the side, the side drops off of the boss on your tank spec. Although you can't switch inside of a flashpoint. Yeah, see, these are all things that we're gonna have to learn as we go along. This is interesting, right? And it, if mm. you if you we'll take as your second combat style on your Marauder a tank spec, that does not mean that you're gonna have two lightsabers on your when you're in your tank spec. Correct. That's absolutely true. Also, are you? Yeah, but that would be fine. Yeah. No. Okay. It's, it's just which you're just turning your character into uh, Juggernaut. Yeah. Yeah. And that that is what I'm gonna do with my my mercenary i'm going to do mercenary and vanguard actually i'm not even going to do power tech i'm going to do mercenary and vanguard on my merc and on my vanguard i'm going to do vanguard and mercenary um as my i don't understand styles. what this vanguard thing is what is that exactly well you have characters on the republic <laughs> side i know you like to think that you don't but you do 
come play with us on the Republic side from time to time. Don't tell Zen that he'll cry. He's trying to turn us into a Republic. Well, we all go. know the inside is the best side. It's honestly at this point, it's just a running joke, and I have to keep it up. I know, I know. As, yeah, as we yeah. Do for all of us. All right, what side about, is the best side, though. What about you, Nick? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? First? Um. Well, I'll probably be confused <laughs> since uh, the buttons will be gone and the UI is going to change a lot and I'll have to like remember how to do all the things and I'll look it up online or call Marcus or both. Um, <laughs> He'll be FaceTiming me. Oh my God. You're like, what does this do? I can't I figure this out. I'm going to say you're at I the loading screen. I can't just smash one, enter. two, three, four, five, six, seven anymore because <laughs> uh, there's no buttons there. But um, figure that out just so I can play things. And then, and then I'm just going to dive into the story as you could have guessed. But um, that's basically it. Set myself up so that I don't have to. I can I could play successfully with with the new changes, and then um, yeah, just dive right into the story and enjoy, soak it all in. Like Marcus said, I like definitely want to take my time and explore all the things to explore, and and not skip any cutscenes and all that good good stuff. I'll probably like make saves and go back and and like look at the different branching options too. I like to mm-hmm. do that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. Yeah, there will be some new character characters coming back and potentially new characters to to check out, maybe some romance mm-hmm. options. There's all that kind of thing that that will always got to well. go for those. <laughs> well, yeah. look look at you, man. How can those uh <laughs> how can those Who'd've... companions resist you? <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought that me in this form, would would ever shoot, go for the the romancing options in in the game? Is, but, is see, I always thought you would fair. romance Kim Ball. Uh, um, why not? You could do them I mean, all, I, I try to romance, romance them all. Yeah, I'm I'm an equal opportunity romancer. Pan galactic. That's what uh, that's what Nick is. Absolutely, <laughs> pan galactic. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, oh. I think that's good. Are you going to stream it? Uh, well, I, I was I wasn't sure because I was gonna stream Horizon Forbidden West because that's coming out at the end of the month too. Mm-hmm. But since Mark has just signed me up, it looks like I'm streaming Star Wars Old Republic for at least a couple streams. There so. we go. All right. <laughs> well, we can keep an eye on that. Yes. Stay tuned for details. How about you, Simo? What are you gonna What are you gonna do first? A very specific, laser focused plan. Ooh. We we know how plans don't survive first contact with the enemy, but <laughs> go on. And how good I how good <laughs> I am at 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 keeping focus. But um, my plan is I I want to level, which I'm going to do via the story. Um, mm-hmm. So I I'm not going to miss any story. I'm not going to space bar through anything. But my goal is to level my merc to eighty. That's my first goal. While not hitting conquest on my merc. We'll see how. So, so I'm going to be leveling my merc, but also <laughs> I'm going to log into other characters if I need to, like bleed off a conquest target that's coming. Right. right. So that's my plan. But that's fun. That's kind of like a little pu- extra puzzle along the. That's along my. The that's way. my. That's yeah. That's my mini game. I think. I think I'm. I'm. I'm going to do that regardless as well. I think I want to. Th- as so- for combat. Like I'm more excited right now about loadouts than I am about combat styles because on my Merc, I feel like what's gonna get what's gonna make my gameplay change the most is if I can easily switch between healing and DPS. Right. And and right. then if I learn to DPS, and by learn to DPS I mean learn my key binds and and the muscle memory for the rotation and all that stuff. Um that that'll be a big change big enough change for me and then i guess my combat style is probably going to be i don't know and then i'm going to be out of a job Oper- operative or something that's, that's going to be a sad day because then Seema's going to be the healer and the dps and i'm just going to have to go cry <laughs> myself to sleep on my huge pillar or you I, can become a healer all right can become a healer okay so Dang, can we <clears throat> can we actually like you know what you know how we do the PVP night in Mega sometimes mm-hmm. and when everybody tries to kill Max? I mm-hmm. think we need to have one where we do a story mode raid where Max is healing. Mm-hmm. A 16 man oh. operation. We can have the other healers there to carry him, but like I think Max needs to heal. We actually had a podcast episode a long time ago where I taught him how to heal. <laughs> yeah, we did. In in past MMOs, I did significant amounts of time as a progression healer. 
in in like top tier content. Uh, so I have yeah. been a healer in past lives, but not in a long, long time. Not in a, in long, a galaxy long, far, far time. away. I think so. There's two things I wanted to 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 follow up on there, Sima, because there were good reminders. Well, well, one came out of the chat room, which is spoilers. Turn general chat off. That's a really good idea, especially on the fleet. The trolls yeah. there will love to just spoil it, and they'll you know. Malgus kills Dumbledore. That's going to show up immediately. You know, you got to watch for, for that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing is, as Sima said, what, why Sima was saying she's going to try not to hit personal conquest target on the character she's leveling her main that she's leveling through the story. We talked about until it last I hit week, 80 or until you hit 80, right? Because you don't get the, the 200 uh, accommodations of, medallions of accommodation or whatever the current, the conquest currency is until you're level 80 and that, and hit personal conquest. So if you hit personal conquest before level 80, you don't get that currency. Oh, wait, but no, it didn't somebody say that they changed that. Changed what? That, that you would still get it now. Yeah, I don't know. We should follow up because, uh, Zam Zam, track this down this was in her prep notes and that's where we first got this uh i think there might have been some some change in the past uh couple weeks where it was clarified where they may still give you that currency between 75 and 80 if you hit your personal oh, target oh, 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 oh. gotcha gotcha which okay. would be nice because that's that's what we're all trying to work around we want which, which, me, which means with my plan i'll get that currency on my characters that are not my merc. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's legacy currency. So Yeah. Oh, okay. That's that's okay. Uh because because you want that that two hundred. Uh because that two hundred will get you a full set of three twenty gear. The the conquest three twenty baseline gear off the vendor once you hit conquest and are level eighty. And you need to be level eighty first. But but in any event, that is my plan, and and like you said, no plan survives contact with the enemy. So if by Tuesday or Wednesday something else seems like a better plan, I totally am going to switch to that. Yeah, for me, uh, Forster just uh, dropped something, and which which we did a whole podcast about this. I forgot Galactic Season. St I wish they wouldn't start Galactic Season two on on Tuesday. Right. So that yeah. actually, I did say that last week too. So like I, yeah. I, 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 I am going to ignore Galactic season two if I can. Right. Like sometimes I can't, I say I'm going to, and then I just can't, but um, that's, that's, I don't want to be split in that first week or two. And, and Medulla, yeah. who's another guildie and is very informed on all things um, according to the game, he said, it's going to be hard to level to 80 without hitting conquest because yeah, it's a, it's yeah. an, it's a substantially more points to level those five levels than it has been in the past to level five levels. So, yeah, you know, he said it's, it, it's serious it's, business to, to level. Yeah. Up to it's 80. my, it's my goal, but I may not, I may, may not make it. Yeah. We may not even make it in the first week. Yeah. Oh, but that's okay. I'm just, I'm just letting you all know. I'm going to make it all the way through Galactic Seasons 2 on Tuesday yes. or Wednesday. <laughs> I when, I sign in, <laughs> when I sign in the first time and it shows and it pops up, I'm going to click, click, and I'm going to be done. I'll have all the rewards and I'll be done. You'll have your so, Cad, Cad Bane yep. companion and you'll be ready to go. Yep. Yep. And this yep. is the way. And I, I and I will not make the mistake, and I'll actually get to buy the stronghold that I wanted to purchase, which was the imp side one, but I didn't see it in the list, and I bought the pub side one <laughs> through Galactic Seasons too. But you can't return it. It's not like Amazon where you click return and they print you a label. Pub you make that choice. Side. Yeah, and I oh trust me, Intasar, Lauren, everybody has busted my butt for you know a year. Yeah, about it so yeah. i'm excited for that and then what i'm really excited for is all of those extra currency items like what i have left after the two seasons because it's going to be really interesting for me do i want to spend them on something else or do i want to save them for the next season because right, what if six so, left right exactly. right so and well, is that because it was three? You have three left from wait, each nine. season. Wait, did you get like eight? No, wait, I can't remember got, how many I have. We got fifteen, and it and it takes eight to buy right. the 
the stronghold. So you right. get you'll so, so you'll spend sixteen out of thirty. You'll have fourteen left. Right. So I'm going to. I'm hoping that there's enough stuff to where maybe like I and that's going to be a long question for me is do I spend it on that other cool stuff that they have available for mm -hmm. you to buy or in the third in Galactic Seasons three is there going to be something awesome that and they come out and say look at if you saved your coins galactic seasons three you can get this and most people may not have that so uh, we'll see it'll be it's gonna be really interesting for me so forster forster we that i we need to look into that that would be a problem so forster says they cap at 15. the problem with that is marcus currently has seven so if he logs in with seven and gets another 15 because he completes the the galactic season all in one blast, does that mean uh. he's going to lose seven of his of his tokens? Because he, so would he need to spend those seven now or or exceed the cap when uh, that's you might need to look into that, Marcus. Hmm. If if there's a cap of 15, then you need to spend seven or you're going to lose them when you put, when you do the buyout on day one. Okay. So I am terrible with this. Um, if anybody goes on the forums, please make a forum post and ask this question. Cause I will say I'm going to do it, but i definitely will not do it. Okay. So, so if you go on the forums, please, somebody ask that exact question because that is, you know, I buy my way to the end right away. But so, I get what Forster is saying is you don't have to, if you buy your way to the end, you don't have to click on all the things and claim all the things right away, right? Do, so I did you think, have to do that when you when you bought it the first time? Did you click on all of the things mm -hmm. and say, give them all to me? So so just don't click on the ones, don't, don't click currency. on the days that give you the, the token. But we should ask that question. Yeah. That is a really good question that came out of this. They should up that. They should up that limit to, to, to 30. 30. Yeah, because look at Lisa Late Bloomer. She's saying she still has all 15. Yeah. So so be careful. Don't click on any of the ro rewards. But, you know, by even if you're doing it the slow way, by the end of the first week, you could have a coin waiting there for you, a token waiting there for you. And if, if you click it because you already have 15 from the first season and you lose it, that would suck. That's a good, that's a good call out. That's, that is something to follow up on. And something else that was awesome about this first season of it is I did the, I pay to the end, but pay the cartel coins, get what I get back. And it was done. Right. Then max did the, I'm logging in every single day. I'm doing it and I yep. want to earn it as fast as possible without flying. And then SEMA was like, I'll get there when I get there. And we all got there mm -hmm. and in our different paths. And I think for the most part, we were all happy about it in the end. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't claw my own eyes out, um, even though I thought I might by the end. <laughs> and Seema kind of did it the, the the best way. I I think of of all of us just playing the game and and letting it letting it come. I think there's a lot to be said for getting it over with and not having to worry about it. Kind of. Also, yeah. Well, for me, it's mostly that I don't. How this is gonna sound super, super? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't like to be told what I have to do. Mm. In you can't game. tell me oh, what that's... to do, man. Exactly. What do you mean in game? You didn't have to qualify that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I just, I, I want to do what I want to do. Like, I don't want to be forced to do something that I don't want to do. So if I have raid night and I log in and I do my raid, but I still, but then I have to go do five heroics i'm gonna feel like it's now a job and i don't ever want to feel that in any right. video game yeah right and for that reason so now we're we're, we're down to me I'll, I'll bring us home here what am i going to do first thanks for asking uh, <laughs> <laughs> gonna, uh i i may ignore galactic seasons the first week uh it's just just because i want to focus on learning all of the new ropes wallowing in in the 7.0 world and feeling what it's like and i will probably just start with the story so i'll i'll start with my mercenary i will log in
and I will just start with the story. I'm not even going to set up my second combat style right away. I'll probably just just do story. As Seema said, I probably will try to keep track of the 100K, maybe get some clarifications over the weekend, check Zamzam's posts on that, but try to try to level up to 80. Uh, try to try to get first get through the story, then try to level up to 80 without hitting conquest and then seeing where things land. Um, and then adjusting that strategy if you, if if it's not possible, if if there's no way to level up to 80 without hitting 100k conquest just because you need to kill so much stuff that's that might end up that way, then figuring out what else I will do. Uh, over the first couple of weeks, I'll probably I'm depending on how that goes and depending on you know where where things stand, I'll, I may then. I'll probably get into the gear then. So if I can get to 80 and I can start the the quest for the legendary implants, because you got to talk to that guy and you got to get the 100 points for, for him to unlock the vendor for the legendary implants, then the gear grind, I might do a little GSF so that I can get a, a piece or two of gear that way. I might be trying to get a group together to do some Master Mode Flash points so mm-hmm. that I can get a couple pieces that way. So I may be like out there like pretty, pretty heavily doing all the things and seeing what it's like to get gear from all the paths. Um, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that and then like feeling out what's feeling the best and how I'm going to mix and match and turn, turn that puzzle into a, you know, a full set of 326 over the course of the next week or two and see where that um, lands. I don't know, Max, you don't seem like the type to let yourself not do it in the first week and be on time. Uh, the, the galactic season part, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like you're going to log in and you're going to see it up there and you're going to say, I got to get it done. So here's, here's the saving grace with the galactic season two, which, which may smooth it out and may, may make this work. Galactic season two, the daily stuff is a little bit smaller and easier to get done and less important. So maybe if I can squeeze in the daily things each day and not make it disruptive to the rest of the stuff I want to do, I may do that. The weekly things are much bigger. And but by the end of the first week, I may be looking to complete some of those weeklies because I'm trying to get 100k conquest points on multiple characters by that point. Right. I mean this right. is this is making a lot of assumptions. Um uh, but I might be going after those kinds of weeklies across my legacy because you could do, if you get personal conquest on five characters, you'll cap your currency for the week because you have a weekly limit on that currency as well. But you have to cap five characters to their personal conquest before you'll cap that currency for the week. But still doing, you know, hundred K. So doing 500 K is not trivial and getting a, a few, uh, you know, a handful of weeklies done that count for galactic seasons as well, that may all come together. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. And then if I get into, into a groove on that, then I, I may end up just doing it every day, like you said. <clears throat> but there's a lot going on. Uh, we'll see. There's a lot going on. A lot, lot going on in Star Wars, a lot going on. Well, Book of Boba Fett's over. I haven't watched the last episode, so I don't know. Maybe I maybe this is what this is where I'm gonna this is where I'm gonna live, and it won't oh, feel like a lot. Max, but. don't worry. Darth Malgus comes. You know he survives, and he shows up in the Book of Boba Fett. Don't worry. Exactly. <laughs> he gets frozen. He gets frozen, he gets frozen for three thousand years, <laughs> and then they defrost him again, and then he's. He's there. That would be yep. that would be incredible to see to see like Malgus come in season three of the Mandalorian. <laughs> to have Malgus show up. And That'd everyone's just confused. Crazy. Who is this guy? Is that I mean, Vader without his he'd ta- be more his he'd be more badass than the guy who was the bad guy for Mandalorian, the Moff. Moff Gideon. Oh, what was his name? Gideon, yeah. Yeah, Gideon. Gideon was right. psychologically cool. Yeah, no, but I not I, physically I, cool. I, I liked him, but I just think and the actor's really good. Like but but yeah, it's, he's okay. not. I mean, he'd he'd be more terrifying than than any antagonist in the last three Star Wars movies. Well, uh, that's but, very true. But yeah, um, but I will say, 
last night myself oh, nick my nick's dad um and another friend of ours gronkin in chat yeah. he uh AJ, we AJ all watched Gump. it together and like we did we had snacks we got popcorn there was wings it was yeah like we made it a party it. yeah and like yeah we all got together about 8 30 at night and i went home at 11 but like we watched the show because the show's like an hour or so but yeah. it was it, we made it like an event and it was so much fun oh yeah um, to do That's it the best way to do it yeah like before it you're like kind of like tinfoil hatting what's going to happen and then afterwards you're breaking it down it's it's really it was it was the thing that i can say about boba fett more than the mandalorian or any of the other show it brought me back to star wars yeah i would say i'm not spoiling anything but episode two was still my favorite episode out of all of them because that one felt the most star wars to me to uh boba yeah. fett yeah, yeah. One, one, two, three of of Boba Fett. The the stuff with the sand people in particular, mm -hmm. I loved. Okay. Yes. I, I would, I, I, I kind of wished that it was just that, and it was just seven episodes of that. That was just some amazing things. And okay, we're gonna have to do. Now we're way off the track. We gotta wrap it up for for tonight. But we're gonna have to come. We're gonna have to do a post mortem on on Book of Boba Fett because you know mm -hmm. once once we get past the spoiler period, we'll get a few weeks out. I would love to to break it down and and talk about that whole series. Uh, I have one more question for everybody. Yes. Okay. And you guys can it's a simple yes or no. Does the game release broken on Tuesday? Yes. <laughs> yes. Are we taking bets? I'm not betting against that. I, I mean, I, well, also you got to well, define. I would broken. do a gentleman's bet, which is one credit. One credit. I will go with. Okay, so I'm, to be bold, I will go with flawless launch of 7.0 whoa wow you know like a, a standard amount of downtime so whatever they'll bring you know they'll bring it down for a couple hours mm -hmm. or, or or whatever and then a, a flawless launch no no like 7.0.b dot dot have, having to right. come up on 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 wednesday or, or anything with that i will take that bet so I I expect three credits by the end of the week. <laughs> oh, I will mail wait, them well, to. I mean, let's clarify. So like, so if there's uh, if low dots aren't working exactly the way they anticipated them, but they're not going to fix them until a dot release, that would be a, that would still be a flawless. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's going to be bugs. Uh, I would yeah. definitely expect there's bugs. But if they have to bring down the servers or the servers are crashing or any of that kind of stuff, then I lose my one credit. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't think the servers are going to crash. I think they might be a little bit late coming up. Um, okay. Like if they say it's going to be eight hours, maybe it's going to be 10 hours, but I don't. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they've got that part down. Well, I guess I'm the Debbie Downer over here because I, I think it's, I think they're changing so many fundamental things about the game. I think day one mm -hmm. is going to be like, the, the server is going to come online and they're going to have an emergency, pull it down and it's going to be ping ponging back and forth. That's, that is my, just because I remember sometimes they do just a regular game update and it messes up everything mm -hmm. and they have to take the server Definitely down possible. quick. This is, you know, and I, and listen, I don't do game development. I built cabinets for a living and I can't even imagine that they change, you know, they change the hairstyle on a mercenary and it messes up the the launcher i don't even understand that spaghetti code <laughs> right. yeah right. yeah all right so we'll we'll have to see and and yes i, I mean realistically that certainly could happen and we tongue in cheek we were saying oh yeah prepare, you know take the day off of work um as as ironic as as we could be because you should never take the day off of work on patch day for a new release. Because, uh, <laughs> because yeah, it could very well be a, a train wreck. Um, that the odds aren't that bad on that. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just being optimistic. Um, maybe hope. Rebellions are built on hope, so I hope that it's <laughs> it's going to go off flawlessly. All right, that was spectacular. We're all very excited. I can't wait for Tuesday. 
Uh, but I think we can wrap it up for today. We didn't go too long. It was about an hour and a half here. This was this is not this is not terrible. So Perfect. Not 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 uh, not bad. So I will. I'll wrap it up with my part. You guys can wrap it up with your part, and then we'll play the play the music out. Uh, so for podcast links, you can follow me on Twitter for Swator Escape Podcast at Max the Gray, and that's Seema and I. That's where we put the feed out. And if you know anybody that should be playing with us, tell them to come check us out on newoverlords.com. That's where everything is going to continue to get posted, including all the links to all of the feeds. And certainly come find our guild at aie-guild.org. Our guild Discord is in the upper right. And you can get there to get an invite on Starforge to the, either the Republic or the Imperial side. Um, remember, Central Time Zone is the best time zone uh, for everything <laughs> that we plan. So you can see all the events like Mandatory Fun Night and, and Mega and that kind of thing. Um, and... <laughs> That was, was the say, weakest we'll mega soon, but... <laughs> ever. I know. He was like, hey, everybody, let's join the mega. No, it's mega. Gonna be mega. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Where we'll sell you the whole sea, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> so speaking of mega. that. Where can we Sorry. find you guys? And uh, and, and what, what should we be following, liking, and subscribing to? Uh, well, you can go to workingclassnerds.com or just type in working class nerds anywhere in the galaxy that you find your podcast. Um, you can also find me on Twitch. I am, uh, twitch.tv slash Nick Vern 51. That's N I C K V E R N five one Marcus, where can people find you? And I stream on Twitch at Marcus B eight one four Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sunday nights. And, uh, check out working class nerds. Sweet. Thanks, guys. And with that, with that, we will talk to you soon. Later.